Now on 8 News at 11. Dozens are feared dead after a tornado outbreak in the Midwest overnight. It's just overwhelming. People have lost their homes, lost their lives. Uh, it's just there's no words for it. We'll take a closer look at just how widespread that destruction is. We've seen heavy rain tonight, but nothing as serious as the Midwest. In the wake of last night's storms, we're taking a look back at tornadoes right here in the Commonwealth. Today's top stories in your Storm Tracker 8 weather in the first eight minutes. 8 News starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us for 8 News at 11. I'm Sabrina Shutters. Our top story tonight, a deadly tornado outbreak left a path of destruction across the Midwest overnight. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir believes 70 people may have died in his state. He fears that number could rise in the coming days. New details about that devastation tonight. President Biden has approved an emergency declaration for Kentucky in the wake of the destructive storms. At least six states were impacted by the severe weather, including 22 reported tornadoes. Rena Roy is on the ground in Mayfield, Kentucky with more. People we've spoken to have likened this to Armageddon. Take a look right behind me and across the street. Collapsed walls, mangled metal. Just a surreal sight, especially for those who have lost so much. Here, this is where my patients would sit. Mina Smith walking us through the remnants of her livelihood. What was once a waiting room. This is our waiting room. Now gutted, the roof totally blown off of her mental health clinic in Mayfield, Kentucky. This here was our uh, upstairs office. Complete devastation all around this small town. When the sun started coming up this morning, it was like matchsticks. Our whole town looks just like matchsticks lying around. This candle factory destroyed 110 workers feared inside. The whole building fell. Kiana Parsons Perez recorded this video moments after the collapse. Hey, they got me out. There have been 22 reported tornadoes across six states. This is likely to be one of the largest tornado outbreaks in our history. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this together, and the federal government is not going to walk away. In Bowling Green, Kentucky, drone video shows the scope of the devastation after an EF3 tornado with winds up to 150 miles an hour touched down. A team now going door to door assessing the damage. It's just overwhelming. People have lost their homes, lost their lives. Uh, it's just the, no words for it. Another EF3 tornado struck this Amazon facility in Edwardsville, Illinois. Officials confirm at least six fatalities. Well, there's a lot of heavy uh, concrete and steel down inside the building. In northeast Arkansas, this nursing home ripped apart, killing one person and leaving five others hurt. And driving through this area, we have seen miles of devastation. And officials say search and rescue efforts are still underway. Rena Roy, ABC News, Mayfield, Kentucky. Now we have team coverage tonight following last night's devastation. We'll hear from Storm Tracker 8 reporter Ben Dennis shortly, but we start with Storm Tracker 8 meteorologist David Williams in the Weather Center. And David, that storm system is now moving east, and several states on the east coast are seeing high wind alerts. Absolutely, Sabrina. The great news is we're on the back end of this system. The system, of course, brought some severe weather towards parts of the Midwest as well as Kentucky, Tennessee, parts of the Deep South, and has continued to push its way through our area, bringing us some very strong winds and some strong showers as well. The heaviest activity pretty much done for this evening. We have the last band of showers continuing to make its way east as we look towards the back end of this front. Calmer conditions are ahead for the remainder of our evening hours going into our overnight hours, clearing skies going into tomorrow morning in a much pleasant day up ahead. More pleasant, I should stay. Temperatures falling into the lower 40s to kick off our early Sunday morning. Temperatures continue to rise from there. We're looking at a pre seasonal day, 54 degrees daytime high, along with mostly clear to sunny skies throughout. And we have a pretty relaxing week up ahead in regards to weather. No rain on the way over the next several days, folks. Next best chance for rain won't be until next weekend. Sabrina. Thanks, David. Well, millions across the Midwest are dealing with the aftermath of those storms. And while less common, we have seen our share of tornadoes here in Virginia in recent years. Storm Tracker 8 reporter Ben Dennis is in our digital center. And Ben, some of those tornadoes here in Virginia have really left their mark. 
Sabrina, you're absolutely correct about that. The circumstances in the American Midwest are grim and they just get worse as the hours tick by. But many here at home will have recent memories of that damage that can be done by these overwhelming forces of nature. An onslaught of American carnage. Several tornadoes left behind treacherous terrain. Communities crumbled and irreversible loss of life. A reality no one wants to face. Yet tornadoes don't fear state lines. We faced our own in Virginia. Flashback to 2018. This jarring video of a roof being ripped off of a warehouse in Chesterfield County. An EF2 tornado came through in September. A man died in that incident. Richmond and Henrico were not spared. Down to trees, power lines, and broken spirits. Being at nighttime, I wasn't really sure what, what was happening, what was going on. A year prior, the Northern Neck tallied up millions of dollars in losses in Lancaster County after an EF1 twister. It's roughly two and a half million dollars in estimated damages to residential structures. Mere months ago in Northumberland County, people stared down this funnel cloud of gray in May. What happened? It's a tornado, baby. We were there for the aftermath. Homes, garages ripped up. I spoke with one woman whose home was completely erased from its foundation. He told me my house was totally gone and I say, stop playing. It was gone. It was truly gone. It came across the field and then it Went across, took my house, went on down through the woods. But God have a plan. It's going to be all right. The question looms. How do you prepare for something with the potential to be so destructive? Given the slight chance for tornado activity not far from Northumberland today, Sheriff Johnny Beachup said have a radio, phones charged, and tie down anything loose inside your home. Some good pieces of advice there. And although the rain made falling leaves wet today, first responders still warn the chance that those leaves could start brush fires. And the wind, it will only make matters worse. In the Digital Center, Ben Dennis, 8 News. Thanks, Ben. Well, new tonight, Richmond police have identified 31-year-old Lamar Jones as the man killed in a shooting this morning. This happened near East Broad and North 18th Street just before 2 a.m. An officer heard gunshots and investigated. Jones was taken to the hospital with gunshot wounds where he later died. Police are investigating the incident. If you have any information, you're asked to call police or Crime Stoppers. And a man is dead after a fatal crash in Chesterfield tonight. We know this happened on North Creek Drive around 715. Police say a driver suffered a medical emergency and crashed into an empty car. That driver was taken to a hospital where he later died. Police are still investigating the cause of that crash. And Richmond City officials and community leaders gathered at the historic Lumpkins Jail site today to pray for the victims of violence in the city. Mayor LeVar Stoney was joined by Police Chief Gerald Smith, State Senator Joe Morrissey and others to mourn the lives of those lost and to pray for peace moving forward. The city has seen its highest number of murders in the last 15 years. Sheriff Antoinette Irving calling for an end to the senseless violence. We have upwards to 80 murders here in the city of Richmond, and we just want to make sure that we are praying for our students, we are praying for our young people, we are praying for our leadership here in the city. After a quadruple shooting last month that left two children dead, police formed a task force aimed at putting an end to the recent surge in gun violence. And the city of Richmond paid nearly $300,000 to people suing for police misconduct during last year's civil unrest. Eight civil suits were filed after the May and June demonstrations. Court records show one case has been settled, five are still active, and one case was dismissed. In one of the suits that's in settlement negotiations right now, Maria Maurer is suing for a million dollars in damages over an incident that sent her to the hospital. We spoke to her after it happened last year. I got shot in the neck by a rubber bullet. It was painful. It kind of took my whole body and pushed me down. The set of lawsuit was filed by two people who claimed police pepper sprayed them while walking along West Broad Street. We filed additional Freedom of Information Act requests to get more details on this. And the battle for a casino in Richmond may not be over yet, as a city council member is betting on a second chance. This while Petersburg is looking to hit the jackpot after RVA voted a plan down last month. 
State Senator Joe Morris, he says Richmond shouldn't have a second shot right away. City Councilwoman Reva Trammell disagrees. She wants a project in her south side district. Morrissey wants to block Richmond for the next five years. Now some Richmonders received a text message and survey asking them how they voted on that referendum. It's unknown who sent it, but it's a clear indication that the casino discussion in RVA is nowhere near over. This is the place where it should have been, where it needs to come back. That's just inconsistent with the democratic process. And that's coming from somebody who tried mightily to get that casino in South Richmond. Now Morrissey says he's not yet filed his bill. Trammell hopes for another referendum less than one year away, but needs the support of her colleagues on city council. And a memorial roughly five years in the making is finally open in Chesterfield County. The Chesterfield County Sheriff's Memorial Monument is etched with three names. Benjamin Branch, Archer Belcher, and Gilliam Congbill, who were killed in the line of duty. Community members, local leaders, and law enforcement officers gathered outside the Chesterfield County Museum yesterday to pay tribute along, alongside descendants of those who lost their lives. Seeing it here, it just it means everything. Oh it, it just, the whole family got broken up in, just in no time at all. So. Yep. And that's what I look at when I see it, you know, what they managed, what they went through. Sheriff Carl Leonard says this one and a half ton granite monument was funded 100% by private donations. The community ultimately raising roughly $36,000 for the project. And coming up after the break, new data shows just how contagious the Omicron variant is, what experts are saying as cases are on the rise. Plus, a look inside VCU's first in-person graduation since the start of the pandemic. David. Thank you, Sabrina. And we still have rain showers out there, folks. Don't worry, activity is coming to an end as we speak tomorrow. A nice day. The sun returns and we'll break it all down after the short break.
In our continuing coronavirus coverage, as the Omicron variant spreads to a growing number of states, infections are expected to rapidly rise across the country. New research shows people under the age of 18 are contributing largely to the growing infection numbers. Hospitals across the country are once again overwhelmed. As for the new variant, early data suggesting Omicron is likely less severe but more transmissible than the Delta variant. Health officials are pointing to boosters as the best way to stay protected. Although we don't have all the answers on the Omicron variant, initial data suggests that COVID-19 boosters help to bolster protection against Omicron. The CDC says more than 50 million Americans have now gotten their boosters. The Pentagon says they're considering making the booster mandatory for active service members in the coming weeks. And VCU's newest graduates gathered at the Siegel Center in Richmond this morning. The first in-person commencement since the COVID-19 pandemic began. The keynote speaker was Camille Schreier, the winner of the Miss America pageant in 2020 and a current student at the VCU School of Pharmacy. Gideon Boateng crossed the stage today saying he was happy to celebrate in person, mass and all. Excited. I'm definitely excited, ready for the next journey. Um, I know it's been quite different since COVID hit, but I mean, we made it, so I'm really excited for what, what's next. Boa Tang says he doesn't have any post grad plans just yet. For now, he's ready to relax and look back on the last four years. The most accurate forecast in central Virginia. Now, your Storm Tracker 8 weather. And I'm joined by Storm Tracker 8 meteorologist David Williams. And David, we just missed our record high temperature tonight, but we've been seeing that well needed rain all evening. Absolutely, which is fantastic news. We saw some great rain this evening. We are still seeing some rain in parts of central Virginia, and we will continue to do so over the next few hours or so. But we are on the tail end of the heavier stuff that we saw a little bit ago. Right now, we're just seeing some very light rain at best. So I'll go ahead and zoom on in here and slow this loop down and take a look at exactly what we're seeing outdoors. And we'll take a look at some of the rain that some of us saw as well in regards to our rainfall amount. So as you can see, heaviest activity made its way off the coast along with that front. So we're not looking at breezy conditions any longer. We are dealing with just a few rain showers at best. As you can see, just a few making their way through Dinwiddie County as well as Sussex County, Greensville County, parts of Brunswick County, all the way stretching towards King and Queen County, King and William County, the Northern Neck, Middle Peninsula area. This activity will continue to make its way off the coastline. So once we get to around midnight and beyond, we're just going to be dealing with mostly cloudy skies, folks. Past that, clearing skies in our overnight hours going into our early Sunday morning. But in regards to some of the rain that we saw, we'll go ahead and see some of the rainfall accumulations that we've seen over the last few hours or so. Really not that impressive, unfortunately, but we did see some rain, so we'll always welcome it. So parts of Chesterfield County, let's let's go ahead and get, grab this picker tool here and see exactly how much rain we may have seen. So parts of Chesterfield County we picked up about three tenths of an inch of rain just under Hanover County picked up just about the same, just under three tenths parts of uh, Dinwiddie County picked up around three tenths as well. Amelia, how, how much did you guys pick up around three tenths? So give or take, most of us picked up about a tenth, three tenths, possibly even four tenths of an inch of rain overall for this event. And that's pretty much what we're where we're going to stay. As you can see, all that rain is making its way out as we speak. As far as current winds right now, we are dealing with those cooler northwestern winds. Winds have significantly died down for most of us. Still a bit breezy here in the city of Richmond, about 24 miles per hour. I believe that's a little bit overblown. I believe we're probably closer to around 10 to 15 miles per hour, but these cooler winds will cool us down as we go into our early morning hours on Monday. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the rain chances that we have in the next several days. Hopefully you enjoyed the rain tonight because the next best chance for rain folks really won't be until next weekend. And even next weekend, not a great chance as of right now, but these are the seventh and eighth days out of an eight day forecast. So we'll have to see as we get closer for tomorrow. Enjoy a beautiful seasonal day. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 50s where we should be. We won't be topping any record highs for tomorrow or getting anywhere close. We're looking at 46 degrees by 10 a.m. Noon, we're looking at 50 degrees, 54 degrees daytime high for tomorrow. And we're looking at mostly sunny to sunny skies from start to finish throughout the day and then past tomorrow. 
We'll see a little bit of a warm up, folks. We're in the 60s for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Low 60s, upper 60s for Thursday, Friday, maybe back to 70 degrees. Saturday, 67. Big temperature swing from Saturday to Sunday, with a chance for showers on both days. Thanks, David. Well, a cream cheese crisis has left New Yorkers spread thin. Junior's Bakery in Flatbush uses almost 4 million pounds of the stuff to make their cakes annually. But recently, production hit a snag due to supply chain issues. Fortunately, a recent shipment made it possible to meet demands, allowing customers to satisfy their sweet tooth. David, I am not a big cream cheese fan really? unless it is in cream cheese wontons. I've never had cream cheese wontons. <laughs> what? Yeah, those you are good. missing out. You're missing out. <laughs> you don't eat cream cheese on a bagel. What do you put on a bagel? Uh, it's okay. Butter? It's okay. Yeah, okay. Butter. 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 Yeah. Lots of butter. 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 Lots of butter. Butter. Butter is a good butter. choice. That's a good yeah. choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be right back with more news. Welcome back when well, we've all been inspired and influenced by remarkable women. Now is your chance to nominate a woman who's made a difference in your life or the lives of others. Head to WRIC.com to share her story and enter her in our remarkable women contest. She could be featured on 8 News. You have through December 31st to submit your entries. Well, new at 11, a Michigan man is dead after a small plane crash in New Hampshire yesterday. We'll take you to that scene. Police received calls of the crash just before noon. Officers round the wreckage of the twin engine plane fully engulfed in flames on the shore of the Merrimack River. 23 year old Emmanuel Von Velakis was the pilot and sole occupant. He was pronounced dead at the scene. His death is now under investigation. And after a recall of several powdered beverage products earlier this month, Coca-Cola is now facing a two beverage recalls of their own products because they may contain bits of metal. Take a listen. This newest recall affects some of the brand's most popular beverages. 12 ounce cans of Coca-Cola and Sprite dated for August 15th, 2022. A second recall also affects a number of Minute Maid drinks like Berry Punch, Fruit Punch and Strawberry Lemonade. Those products are dated January 2022. Anyone who purchased any of these products should return them for a full refund or throw them away. And the Virginia High School League Class 4 Football State Championship was today, and your Verina Blue Devils took on the Broad Run Spartans. Our 8 Sports reporter Tyler Thrasher was at that game. He brings us a recap of the action from Liberty University. 
What a game. The Verona Blue Devils are state champs for the first time in school history. They just beat the Broad Run Spartans here at Liberty University in their first state final appearance since 1999. Let's go check out those highlights. The Blue Devils won against Kings Fork in the state semifinals to reach the Class 4 state final stage. And they were ready to win from kickoff today. Verona scored first off a one yard drive in the first quarter by Anthony Fisher. That's 7 nothing Blue Devils right there. Proud supporters filled the stands to cheer them on. Parents were everywhere. Even Tyrone Nelson from the Verina District was here. Then again, a thing of beauty. Miles Derricott tosses to Anthony Fisher, who throws it back to Derricott for the score. He runs it right in from about 20 yards out. The Verina fans were rocking the stadium at this point. Broad run scored one before Derricott threw to KV on keys for the 63 yard touchdown to bring the score to 21 to 7. Broad run pulled another back before Josiah Miner stretched the Blue Devils lead to 28 to 21. And guess what? That score held, and your Verina Blue Devils were crowned state champs. I caught up with head coach Marcus Lewis and offensive player of the season, Anthony Fisher, after the game. Since week nine, we didn't have close games. One by one point, we lost the game by one point. We just got to stay cool. Coach always tell us if it's more time on the clock, we can always make a play. Oh, man, it's, it's just a great feeling. I mean, it's been a long time, man. That's all I can say. I know my phone about to be blowing up, the alumni, the, the other kids that play for us, man. It's about time that we finally get a ring up around the high school. That was Tyler Crash for reporting. We'll be right back with a final check of your Storm Tracker 8 forecast.
Welcome back everyone. Storm Tracker 8 meteorologist David Williams. Tomorrow will be a seasonal and sunny day, a little bit warmer on Monday, and we continue that warming trend into our upcoming work week. 70 degrees by Friday. Rain chances not making their way back in until our next weekend. So a pretty nice week overall. Uh, David, you know I love my warm temperatures. <laughs> I can't yeah, wait. You're going to love Friday. <laughs> you will love Friday. Yes, I'm so ready for Friday. Yeah, Thank you, David. Friday. Thank you for watching A News.